Hello and welcome back to the Helix channel. Now those of you that may have just recently watched our Bell 429 video may have wondered, like we did, where did the 429 come from? We've obviously done the 505 came from the 206, we've done the 407 came from the Long Ranger, but actually the 429 came from this, Bell 222 this is our one you need this one which is a bell 222 a now this is as you can see painted like airwolf clearly it's not the original airwolf that sadly is no longer with us it has no guns obviously disappointing but it is a representation of exactly what airwolf was so a few facts about the treble two that you may or may not know treble two was bell's first civilian production light medium twin helicopter it then went on to become the treble two b the 230, the 430, the 427, then up to the 429. I'm just going to point out a few little characteristics about the Treble 2. We are going to do a pre-flight video and a startup video, which is, I'm sure, the one that everybody wants to see. But this sponsor on the side is quite interesting. It's an aerofoil design, so it does actually produce a bit of lift during flight. This one is a retractable undercarriage Treble 2. There was also a fixed undercarriage, which was the UT. The sponsor on the side actually houses fuel and obviously somewhere for the undercarriage to go. Treble 2 is also a first in terms of its hydraulic system that it had, the electrics, the autopilot, etc. But we can't really talk about the Treble 2 without mentioning the rotor head. Now the head is a derivative of the Cobra gunship and the blade, you have to notice that wide cord blade which gives the Treble 2 its characteristic sound. It's a 39 foot diameter rotor system, so it's two big wide blades. Um, which was the design at the time, then as we know, blades went into a more four-bladed, five-bladed. Has a nodal beam system, very similar to the Long Ranger, so it is actually a very smooth aircraft for a two-blader. And it will get up to around the 150 knots, where it does get a little lumpy at that end, but it's two-bladed. It's powered by two Lycoming LTS-101 engines. They're around about 600 shaft horsepower each. There are two fueling systems on it. This is the main tank on this side, and we have an auxiliary tank on the port side. Good sized boot for the day as well. Sadly this one doesn't have its carpet in today because this actual Treble 2 isn't serviceable as of today but we're going to get on to that. But it was a good sized boot for the day. You know a large aircraft needs a large boot as we spoke about on the 429. You'll also see some design characteristics down here. Now these end plates were a late addition for the Treble 2. Its initial design it had a T-tail like a Hughes 500E. These were added later, and if you look at the design of it now, you can see these very resemble the 407 and the 429. Again, moving rearwards, you can see a lot of 206, 407 design cues all the way through. Large rear fin uh, to, to assist with stability in the cruise. Continue on round to the tail rotor. As I said earlier in the video, we're going to do a pre-flight video. We'll get a bit more into the depth on the, the tail rotor. But you can see it's a typical bell, two-bladed teetering system. But just look at the size of the cord. If I put my hand against it, you know, that's larger than some main rotor blades on other helicopters. A few other interesting facts about the Treble 2. 
they came out the factory around five thousand pounds empty weight and gross was eight thousand one hundred so pretty good figures for sort of back in the early 80s but what we should really have a look at now is the inside a few years ago i was talking to one of the older engineers at bell who said and it's an unpleasant subject as we all seem to touch on in our videos but if you were going to have a crash have it in a triple two because the rigidity of the shell is so strong one of the reasons for that i'll show you just here as we go into the rear cabin look at the width of the doors it's compared to a modern aircraft they're huge and they're slam shut doors it sounds up more like a car door than a helicopter door but that gave it great strength which was a great feature of the uh, the triple two in the day just before we climb in worth pointing out 1981 helicopter double glazed windows and one of the features of the triple two was that you could or can sit in the back with no headset it's not silent but it's quiet enough that you can have a conversation without headsets on also the huge amount of room now on the 430 they stretch the cabin even further and the early uh, the triple twos the seating could be configured for up to eight passengers in the back that would be quite cozy but this is really where it was suited for five guys in the back lots of leg room Smooth ride, cabin call for the front, for the pilot. What else would you need? Now, it wouldn't be one of our videos if we didn't have a look in the front, my favourite part, the cockpit. So let's go and take a look now, shall we? OK, let's make our way around to the front. A couple of interesting facts about the Treble 2, because there's many. Uh, they made 82 of the Treble 2 A's, which this model is, and 199 in total were produced. Also came equipped, as this one has, with weather radar, which is in the front, which again we'll touch on more when we do the pre-flight video. But let's get in the, uh, the interesting place. Right. So, first thing you're going to notice is everything that we've said we've changed, which we now prefer, is all in here. Huge instrument panel. The visibility's okay, but there's still a lot of obscurity here. And lots and lots of steam gauges. This is a busy cockpit, but it's got a bit of charm about it, really. But one of the things that's really different is this collective. A normal collective, as we know, comes out the floor, a pole in your hand here. This one is a completely different design. Throttles are, in, are on the side here. And your first flight in it, it's a little strange, but actually you do get used to it. And it's actually quite a nice position for the collective. Again, up ahead, like we've spoken on all our previous videos on the 505, the 407 and the 429, no circuit breakers. On here, there is an array of them. And you really do realize how far things have come forward now because there's an awful lot going on here of switches, circuit breakers, lights. There's a caution panel here, which is off of this button here. There's another one you press down here to get lights to come on down here. It's a very busy cockpit, but it is still kind of cool. And there's some differences that are also similar on the 412, the 212. On our torque meter, we have a mast torque meter. And we have one needle for each engine as well. So there's three needles to monitor us again. So we keep going back to glass cockpit, easier to manage, less to look at. So although a lot of old school charm, it's a busy cockpit. So another interesting fact about the Triple Two, it's going to be the video of interesting facts. Glass windshield, heated as well, all part of the certification process. As we said earlier, there will be two other videos pre-flight and startup. On the startup video, we spend a fair bit of time in the cockpit. I'll go through all the switches, the buttons, the autopilots, all the lights, so you'll really enjoy seeing how to start a triple two. What's our takeaway on the triple two then? My personal opinion, I think it's a phenomenal design, a really pretty helicopter. But did you know you can still get brand new parts for a triple two from Bell today? So when you buy a brand new Bell, that's what you're buying into. The support is unrivaled. And we have moved a long way forward with the 429, the 407 and the 505. Clean cockpits, glass, no circuit breakers is the way to be. But it does take you back here that pilots were in a busy environment back in the day with all those switches and all those gauges. But phenomenal helicopter. Join us next time on the pre-flight video.